many of us enjoy the additional features that are unlocked by gaining root access to the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro. But the monthly over-the-air updates can cause conflicts with this setup since they aren't seamlessly installed through the traditional over-the-air update process. In fact, you'll get an error if you try to install an over-the-air update on a rooted Pixel device. So in today's video, I'm going to show you a method of installing these monthly security over-the-air updates on the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro while keeping all of your personal data intact. And once the update has been installed properly, we can then reroute the phone just like we did the first time around. So this process begins by first disabling all of the Magisk modules that you may have installed. And we can do this by first opening up the Magisk app, then tapping on the Modules tab here at the bottom, and toggling each of our active modules off. Then we're going to perform a reboot so that these modules actually get unloaded on boot. If you have installed any other root mods to your phone, it is also advised that you undo these changes as well before continuing with the update process. We can go ahead and check that the modules have indeed been disabled. And with this done, we're now going to use the computer to bring up the Google Factory Images website, since we're going to be installing this over-the-air update using the Android Flash tool in a Chrome browser. I'll go ahead and link to this website in the video description below for anyone who wants a direct link to this page. Since we are using the Android Flash tool, you are going to need to have USB debugging mode enabled on your Pixel 7 or Pixel 7 Pro. We are at the factory images page. We have scrolled down to our specific device and we're gonna find the over the air update that we want to install. In this video, I'm going to be installing the November security update. So after that has been found, I'm going to click on Flash. We are going to allow ADB access. And then click the New Device button, Add New Device button here, so that we can select our Pixel 7 Pro. If you get this error about the device being used by another program, then run this command, just as it says, in a command prompt in your ADB and fastboot directory. Once your device is, has been selected and is connected, we're going to make sure that the wipe data option is not checked. And if we click the advanced options, we also have the ability to disable Verity and disable verification if that's how you want your phone set up. These two options are usually only used for those who want to install a custom kernel. And since I won't be doing that to mine right now, I'm going to ignore these options. When you are ready, let's begin the process and let the Android Flash tool install the new over-the-air monthly security update by clicking on the blue install button down here at the bottom and then confirm that yes this is our selected device and yes this is the firmware that we want to install. We're going to click confirm, click accept, 
and now you're going to see your Pixel 7 or Pixel 7 Pro reboot as the website begins running the entire script to install this monthly firmware update. Be sure to make note of these two instructions right here. We do not want to unplug the device. We don't even really need to touch the device or the USB cable. So make sure that we have a stable connection by not interfering with this process. If you get this, we're going to click reselect the device and find our device in the list again. There's no need to interact with the device at all, again, unless instructed to do so by this website. After the firmware has been downloaded, it's going to begin running the script. And we're going to let the website complete this script through to completion so that it's doing all of the major work for us. You will see the device reboot multiple times. And you're even going to see it boot into user space fast boot which is going to be indicated by the word fastboot D on the top of your screen. So you're going to see the script run through multiple big files. That previous one had to be broken up into 11 different pieces. 
this partition data file is broken up into four different pieces. And again, we're just letting the script run through from start to finish. Once it completes, you're going to see the green install complete option right here, and the phone is going to be rebooted one last time. We're going to let the phone boot up like normal so that we can confirm that we have not lost any of our data and that the phone is not in a boot loop. You can see we still have all of our apps installed and all of our data is intact. We're going to even let that system update complete just as it showed in the notification. We can even go to the about phone section within the settings app to make sure that the build number is correct and we are on the November monthly security update. Once we see the Pixel 7 or Pixel 7 has rebooted with the new over-the-air update installed, let's go ahead and download the same firmware that we just installed. Again, this is downloaded from the same Google Factory Images website that we just used. We'll just be clicking the la link labeled link instead of the link labeled flash so that we can download the entire firmware to our computer. So now we're going to root the phone just like we did the first time. This means extracting the firmware that we just downloaded, which gives us this folder, going into this folder and extracting the contents of this zip file which gives us these files. And now we're going to take the init underscore boot dot image file and we're going to copy this file to our Pixel 7 so that we can patch it with Magisk. Once we have that file on our device, we're going to open up the Magisk application. We're going to tap on install, select and patch a file and then browse to the location that you put that file in. Once it's selected, tap on Let's Go and let the phone patch the image and then output a patched image file in the same directory. It's going to be labeled Magisk underscore patched, the version of Magisk, and then some random letters and numbers. So now we're going to take this file and copy it back to our PC and we're going to put it in the same folder as our ADB and Fastboot tools. Once we have moved that patched file back to our PC, we then need to reboot the Pixel 7 or Pixel 7 Pro into Fastboot mode. If you're not familiar or remember how this is done, I'll be linking to a dedicated tutorial that I did previously on this channel. You'll find that linked in the video description below. And we can also use the ADB reboot bootloader command since we have USB debugging mode enabled. With our phone connected to the PC via a USB cable, 
we can run the command fastboot space devices in the same folder as our ADB and fastboot tools to make sure that it is being detected by fastboot. And then we're going to run the command fastboot space flash space init underscore boot and then the name of that file, the patched file that we just copied back to our phone. So you can start typing out that file name and then press tab like I did and it should auto complete that file name for you. Again, this is the same process we did when we rooted the phone the first time. So with the phone in fastboot mode, we're going to execute this command. You're going to see that it has sent that file to either init underscore boot underscore b or init underscore boot underscore a depending on which partition you're using and after it has been sent it's going to write that file to that partition. You should get a finished total time message right here no errors and once that's done we can reboot the phone back into Android by selecting the start option in fastboot mode. As the Pixel 7 or Pixel 7 Pro boots back up, it's going to boot up like normal. So it's not going to take any extra time since we have not done any factory data reset. We have not erased any of our data. It's just going to go through the typical boot animation sequence. So now that we have booted back into Android, you can see all of our data is still intact. We have not lost any of our information, our pictures, our videos, our apps, our games. And when we go into the Majisk app, we can see that we are back to a rooted device, which can also be confirmed with a root checker app. And that completes the tutorial here today. We have installed a new monthly security over the air update, November's update in this example, while keeping all of our data and gaining root access again. Now you can go in and enable your Magisk mods that you previously disabled and install any other mods that you may want.